James has recently done a featured build using this MSI Z790 Project Zero motherboard along with a bunch of other MSI hardware and now I'm going to do a review of this MSI B650M Project Zero which as the name suggests uses an AMD CPU. A quick glance at this B650M Project Zero motherboard tells you all about its origins. It's fairly clear it started life as a B650M Gaming Plus Wi-Fi, which is a micro ATX motherboard with a B650 chipset that sells here in the UK for about £150. The big difference with the Project Zero version of the B650M is that it is amazingly clean and tidy on the front side, because of course there are no connectors. They all live on the back. We have heat sinks over the monolithic power VRMs, which are a 10 plus 2 plus 1 Dr. Moss setup. We have this rather smart heat sink over the M.2 storage. Four DDR5 slots. And that is pretty much it. Turning to the back, we have the main power connector, the two EPS connectors, and then we have an array of headers and connectors around the periphery of the board. It should also be obvious with this micro ATX motherboard, the cutouts for the headers and connectors at the foot of the board are at this point. If it was an ATX board, they'd be about here. It therefore matters whether your case supports Project Zero and supports either or Micro ATX or ATX or both. Thankfully, MSI has a compatibility list. You need to double check this list to make sure you don't run into problems. Returning to the B650M Project Zero, Let's look at those features. On the front side of the board, we have the main graphics slot powered by the processor, which is a PCI Express Gen 4 x 16. We also have a Gen 3 x 1 slot, which is powered by the chipset. For storage, we have two M.2 Gen 4x4s, and there are four SATA 6 gigabit per second. The maximum supported memory speed is 7600 MHz, but the specification suggests that 6400 MHz is as fast as you really want to go. The VRMs are 80 amp monolithic power Dr. Moss, and it's a six layer PCB. On the back of the board where most of the connections happen, at the top we have three PWM fan connections and one ARGB header. At the bottom we have another two PWM fan headers and a second ARGB header. We also have four USB 2.0s. And at the side we have a USB 3.0 Type-A 5 gigabit per second that supports two ports and a USB-C 10 gigabit per second. Turning to the rear I.O. panel, we have two USB 2 Type-A's, two USB 3.2 5 gigabit per second Type-A's, three USB 3.2 Type-A 10 gigabit per second, a USB 3.2 Type-C that's 10 gigabits per second, and a USB 3.2 Type-C that's 2 by 2 and rated at 20 gigabits per second. For networking, we have Realtek 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. For graphics, HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4. The next step, of course, is to install hardware in the motherboard. I'm going to use an AMD Ryzen 7 7700X and some G-Skill Trident Z Neo DDR5 6000, which supports AMD Expo rather than the usual Intel XMP. That's straightforward enough. However, actually getting the system running out of a case is difficult. Of course, the power supply cables have to go underneath and look at all the headers and connectors. If I take this processor box and I balance the motherboard like that, Clearly the headers and connectors are protected, but actually hooking up cables is nigh on impossible. And when I put in a chunky graphics card, the board's going to be a bit wobbly. So the best move is to actually install the B650M Project Zero in a case. And I think the Project Zero motherboard in the built PC looks absolutely superb. Isn't that just neat and tidy? No doubt you've spotted I'm using the MSI Mag Pano 100LPZ case that James recently used in his Project Zero build. And the graphics card is a Sapphire RX 6950XT 16GB. That's a Nitro Plus Pure, so we've got the whole white aesthetic going on. The CPU cooler is a Fantex Glacier 1360D30. And just wait until you look in the right-hand compartment and look at the power supply and the cabling. 
First we shut the PC down and then we remove the right hand side panel and we can see almost nothing behind that panel. We open the doors that cover the cables and we reveal quite a mess. In other words, cable management simply isn't required to make everything look neat and tidy. The ability to hide all the cables away in the right hand side and therefore out of view of the main compartment is a feature of Project Zero, but ironically it means you cannot currently see the Project Zero connection. So let's take the power supply out. And there you have it. It's entirely unnatural, and yet it makes perfect sense. And I've asked this question before, but I'm going to ask it again. Why on earth has it taken this long to come to this logical state of affairs. It's bizarre, and yet I absolutely love it. We need to remind ourselves this is a motherboard review, so let's take a look around the BIOS and see what's going on. And it is immediately apparent the BIOS has no features that relate to the Project Zero-ness of the motherboard. This is all about the fact it's a B650 and a relatively basic one at that, which is what we expect from a Micro ATX motherboard that sells for around £150 typically. We enable the Expo memory settings, we save, and we head into Windows. And let's run a couple of benchmarks to see how the motherboard performs. We've previously run Cinebench R23 on the Ryzen 7 7700X, and the score we got in the past was 19,829 marks. Today the temperature is a slightly more toasty 23 degrees rather than 21 degrees. However, the results are very similar. The CPU is drawing 140 watts and running at 5.125 gigahertz. The temperature shoots up to 90 degrees in exactly the way we'd expect and eventually ticks up to 92 degrees. The system's pulling 275 watts at the wall socket. The VRMs you will note are very cool. Over time, the temperature gradually rises and just about touches 44 degrees C. And our new score in Cinebench R23, slightly slower than previously, 19,480. Let's do a quick run of 3 d Mark Time Spy to see how our Sapphire RX 6950XT Nitro Plus Pure is performing. Dominic has reviewed this exact graphics card, but he used a Core i9-12900K, and with that setup he got a score just under 22,000 points. With the combination of Ryzen 7 7700X and the Sapphire 6950XT, the graphics card's pulling 230 watts and running at 2.35 gigahertz. The temperature is perfect reasonable at 68 degrees and the final graphics score is 21,332 only very slightly down from Dominic's score and let's have a quick run in Far Cry 6 at 1080p with ultra image quality settings the game absolutely tears along at an average of 165 fps and a minimum of 112 fps and that brings us neatly to the conclusion of my review of the MSI B650M Project Zero. So let's look at the pros and cons. On the plus side, Project Zero hardware helps you to build an ultra tidy PC. You get a good selection of USB ports on this motherboard and also Wi-Fi 6E. Connectivity is good. And, and this might sound slightly peculiar. The B650M Project Zero performs exactly the way you would expect. This is a tried and true platform. It's just been updated by moving the, I say just, it's been updated by moving the connectors to the rear side, but the board itself is a well-known quantity and there are no nasty surprises. Cons the negatives. It's essential that you pick a case that's compatible with your motherboard. As I said at the start of this review, it's one thing to get a Project Zero case, but that may well be for ATX rather than Micro ATX. You need to check and to recheck. Secondly, you pay a significant premium for the Project Zero-ness. In this instance, it's 50 or 60 pounds over the basic motherboard. That's 150. This is just over 200. And finally, testing the motherboard outside of the case is tricky. It's borderline impossible, in fact. Putting it in the case before you run up your system is pretty much essential. That may not be a problem in the future, but right now it's unusual for me. Overall, it's a worth buying. It's an 8 out of 10.